cut the edges of these off and then give me a five by five square. There you go, buddy. Jump on it. I know you're bored to death. <laughs> I'm trying. We're almost there. We're gonna quiet up that water pump and fix all the lines right. There you go, sport. Ah. <laughs> well, welcome to another episode. If you're new here, my name is Bob. This is Barbara. We are in Carson City at an RV park. At an RV park. If you follow along with us, you know that this is one of our least favorite types of places. But we had no choice. There's some BLM land uh, near Dayton. And we showed up there and there wasn't a single person there. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of strange um, because it's a prime boondocking spot, great access great location so we started doing some research and we found out that it's actually closed we were there on the second and they shut it down the day before right overuse people overextending their 14 day stay so they shut it down and that was like the only accessible blm land that i felt like looking for they closed down all the blm in this area yeah and there's Everything. and there's some from like 1997 that's closed down mm -hmm. and it's still closed down like 20 years later for no camping still open for day use but closed for camping so we had to scramble we found this rv park it's at a casino and it is what it is honestly it's not bad yeah it's not it's been relatively quiet yeah there's been a lot of people that have been in and out no it's, real complaints no i mean it's tight it's cramped it's an rv park it's an rv park no privacy but hey you got connections and we were 20 minutes closer to exploring lake tahoe which is kind of the reason that we came up to this area right we were going to stay in lake tahoe but i thought the area was still like gonna be covered in snow it's not it's not exciting events this week we had our, another leak in the rv come home to see water dripping water dripping outside of the rv under yeah. the rv from inside of the rv to the outside of the RV. luckily we didn't have any major water damage there's a lot of loose fittings that were loose i guess the hose that comes from the manufacturer doesn't really fit onto the fittings too well right like at all yeah. So there were several of those things that were leaking. Mm -hmm. We called an RV mobile tech out. Thank goodness for Eric from Great Basin Mobile RV Repair. He came out. We called at 9. His 10 o'clock had canceled. It just so, canceled. So he was able to come out literally an hour later and proceeded to spend the next seven hours replacing all of the plumbing in the rig mm -hmm. with proper PEX tubing. Right. The stuff that's not going to go anywhere. So we learned that they, they don't do this in rigs because it takes too long to make all those 90 degree bends. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had everything replaced, well over $1,000, but we figured it's going to be worth it because we yeah. would have just called somebody. Every few months every when few something months. new started to leak, he replaced everything. The, the hose that they use, and yeah, the hose is easy because you can just run it wherever you want it. And so he took all of that <clears> out. Yep. Made the, the pump quieter. I guess put in these these hoses that it was supposed to come with mm -hmm. but that weren't present from the manufacturer from the dealership right. whoever did it uh so anyway just made everything a lot better mm -hmm. fixed our problems moved on from that and uh yeah we had a good time exploring lake tahoe it's beautiful amazing probably one of our favorite oh absolutely next to like washington and oregon i think this is probably the next yeah this would be my top three for yeah, sure absolutely one cool thing we did is we went kayaking mm -hmm. on Lake Tahoe. And this was kind of spur of the moment thing. So we, we came in, we set up shop, and then we drove up to Lake Tahoe to kind of scope out the area, explore things a little bit with no real plans. Saw the people canoeing, looked them up on the internet, booked as a slot for Wednesday, mm -hmm. and the weather was perfect. It was
question. <laughs> no, this is a serious question? Yes. I started to get a little antsy because my butt was getting really numb. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah, can we start? The water is very, very cold. Yeah. In the, the kayak, of course, the water is dripping in off your paddles and you're, you're sitting in the bottom of the kayak. Yeah, so you get kind of wet. Your butt's nice and wet by the time you're all done. The boats were clear, so you could see like 70 feet down through the end of the water. And I guess at one time or another, Lake Tahoe was like 400 feet higher than it was. Right. It was just kind of cool to be, to go through this area in a kayak and to get into some of the history of the area and some of the stories of the coast. And... Yeah, yeah. Uh, our We went out with like a, a tour guide and he was able to give some really neat information, things that you can't see from the road, things that, you know, when you're actually in the lake and looking back up, he was able to point out some things yep. that you would just drive right past or drive right, right over and not know yeah. about it. So that part was, was neat. It was cool. Small things, but like important things. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna be in Lake Tahoe, we highly recommend doing the kayaking. Yeah. Uh, definitely a, a wonderful experience, especially this time of year. There was still snow on the mountains. Uh, the water's calm, the weather was nice. Mm -hmm. So overall, A plus. Yeah. What else we do? We hiked. Mm -hmm. uh, we hiked from Chimney Beach down to Secret Cove. It was amazing. Very little people there. Yeah, tiny it, sprinkling of people. Tiny sprinkling of people. When we first got there, there was we didn't see anybody for mm -hmm. a while until we heard a couple of other people. But yeah, it seemed like it'd be a seldom visited, or maybe it's just a time of the year. Could be the time of the year. We were also there kind of early in the morning, so during the week. And the trailhead to that place is still closed, mm -hmm. so we had to park up on the road and then hike down. It was a pretty long ascent. At least, well, it felt long on the way back up. Yeah, it was. It Probably was tough wasn't bad back, back down, but that area is amazing. Ugh. The water and the rocks. We could have stayed there all day. <sighs> we it really could have. Was beautiful. One of the most scenic places I think we have seen yet yep. since being on the road. Okay, you're gonna have to hurry because I don't know. I can't see that way. All right. Here. I just go this way. The weather is beautiful, but all the parking lots for all the trails are still closed. I guess it's still winter here. Ah, the forest. Look at the green trees. Oh, green trees. Oh, pine cone.
the hiking trail was amazing. The water was amazing and there was like these little secret coves. One of the places I went to was Secret Cove and the water was so clear. It looked like a tropical yeah, paradise. Like you're in the Bahamas or something, not like you're in Nevada. It exceeded my expectations. Oh, absolutely. Because we've seen pictures like Tahoe and we we're looking forward to seeing it, but to see it like that was, was something yeah, else. This was better than I would have ever imagined. Yeah, so we definitely recommend. It's a relatively short hike from Chimney Beach to Secret Cove. Yeah. But you can hike like all the way down mm -hmm. along that coast there. There's all kinds of coves in either direction. You can just yep. keep going. And there's no houses there. There's doesn't seem like there's any private property. So mm -hmm. you have a lot of just expansive open beach that's neither state park. Uh, it's just kind of open wilderness area. So yeah. definitely a cool area to go check out. Well, the amenities have been nice, but I'm really looking forward to getting back into boondocking. Mm -hmm. And we, we got back into the forest out oh. here oh. in South Lake Tahoe. So now we're we're itching to keep moving and get back into the trees. Yeah. And we found moss and I had a little a little tear. It was just it was beautiful. We wanted to hug the trees. Yeah. It was so amazing. I mean the desert is cool, but man, we just get this certain feeling from the forest. Yeah. Like that's our It's it's home. That's our home is in the forest. Mm -hmm. So from here we're gonna head off to Bonneville Soft Flats and then we're gonna check out Provo and then we're gonna try to duck up into the mountains of Utah to see if we can find a spot higher up in elevation with no snow and then make our way across to Colorado and then up and then east. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna savor these boondocking spots while we can yeah. until we start hitting the campgrounds out east. So we're excited that you're joining us on our adventures. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining, thanks for watching, and we will see you next week.